Uh, hi, uh, so today we are going to talk about uh, the topic of physics uh, that is quite important if you want to learn the chapter uh, in the physics. Uh, the first thing is very important for you to learn that to learn the physics we need some sort of basic mathematics in order to understand the physics uh, topics. So, what is the kind of mathematics that we are going to learn today? Uh, it is mainly have to do with the vectors uh, and some part of calculus that we are going to uh, study today. So, first we will talk about what is the vector and what is the scalars. So, our topic for today is basic mathematics that is required to understand the physics. The first thing we are going to learn is vectors and scalars. All the quantities that you will learn in the physics can be described either as a vector quantity or as a scalar quantity. To do that we will see in this case ki what are the quantities that are the vector quantities and what are the scalar quantities. So, first we will talk about what is the means of scalars. So, scalar quantities are the physical quantities that require only magnitude to define they do not need any direction to define. So, we will see in this case physical quantities that only needs magnitude to define right. The example of this would be the mass the example of such quantities is mass distance energy etcetera ok. So, what is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is what? When we say the mass of one apple is 5 kg, the mass of another apple is also 5 kg, then if we suppose combine two apples, the total mass of apples becomes 10 kg. It does not matter in which direction the one apple is meeting the another apple. So, if I add one apple of 5 kg with another apple of 5 kg no matter how they are coming together the answer the net mass of both apple will have the 10 kg. So, such quantities in which you only need magnitude there is a no need to worry about the directions these quantities are called as scalar quantities. Now, we are going to talk about what is the meaning of vector quantities. Vector quantities are the ones that have magnitude that have the magnitudes vector quantities vector quantities have magnitude. So, these are physical quantities physical quantities that require that require magnitude and direction to define. Right. So, physical quantities that needs uh, the magnitude and direction to define such quantities are called as vectors. The examples of vector is displacement that is the first thing you will learn velocity acceleration force etcetera. So, these are the basic uh, vector physical quantity that you will learn shortly, but there is a one more important thing is also there. Uh, so, let us talk about force if let me say we have a block we have a block let me say I have this block and in this block if I apply a force let me say F 1 equal to 
5 Newton from the top and if I apply a force F2, if I apply a force F2 2 Newton from the left side to the right side, in that case the net force on this block will not be equal to 7 Newton. If I want to calculate the net force, then the net force will not be equal to 5 plus 2 equal to 7 Newton. So, that is the speciality of the vector quantities. The vector quantities do not follow the simple rules of algebraic addition or subtraction. Now, what kind of rule they follow? A vector quantity apart from having the magnitude and direction should also follow the vector law of addition. This vector law of addition is also called as triangle law of addition or parallelogram law of addition. So, what we say here? So, we have to write down one important point. The important point says a physical quantity should also follow vector law of addition. We will see later on the vector law of addition is also called as triangle law of addition as well as parallelogram law of addition. Also follow the uh, vector law of addition if it has to be a vector if it has to be a vector. Now, can we see an example where a quantities, a quantity has magnitude as well as direction, but it is not following the vector law of addition, thereby this quantity cannot be a vector quantity. The answer is electric current, the basic quantity that we have. Suppose, let me say if we take a wire if we take a wire let me say is a wire AB, a wire AB and in this wire let me say the current is moving let me say I 1 is my 2 ampere from A to B. If I take another wire and join these two at the point V, so let me say I am taking now wire P V, in this wire the current I 2 is moving let me say 1 ampere. Then if the wire is coming out of B, let me say this wire is my V C, then the current I 3 is becoming 2 plus 1 equal to what 3 ampere. So, the current is following simple rule of algebra, incoming current is 2 ampere, again 1 ampere, both will get combined at the B. So, 2 plus 1 equal to 3, that is simple rule of algebra, the current is following thereby it is not a vector quantity. Even though it has magnitude, you can see from the 2 ampere, it has direction that is my from A to B, but still it is not a vector quantity because it is not following the vector law of addition. So, in our case, we are going to talk about the vectors now in more detail, key what has to be done if we are going to solve the problems based upon the vectors. First to learn what is the meaning of vectors, how do we show them, how do we, uh, what symbols that we use for the vectors and then what is the method by which we add the vector, we subtract the vector, what are the rules that follows when we multiply a vector with a scalar and up to so on. So, let us say the vector is shown by an arrow, it is shown, it is shown by an arrow. The length of arrow, suppose if I am indicating this my arrow, then the length of arrow, this length, this length of arrow gives you the magnitude of the vector quantity, this head of the arrow, let me say this arrow has the tail here at the point A and the head here at the point B, then the direction of arrow indicates 
the arrow indicates the direction of the vector quantity the length indicates the magnitude the head of arrow indicates the direction so I'll write here the length of a vector length of arrow indicates the magnitude of quantity indicates the magnitude of quantity and the head of arrow and the head of arrow indicates the direction indicates direction of course higher is the length you will have more magnitude if lower is the length you will have the lower magnitude so if i draw the two vectors if i draw the two vectors let us say this is my first vector is my a b if i take these two second p q then you can see the length of p q is smaller than the length of a b thereby this vector has less magnitude then a b if i draw another vector let me say r s and if r s and r a b if r s and a b has the same length so they have the same magnitude but their arrow their arrow is in different directions thereby they are indicating the different directions the arrow will indicate the directions and because the two vectors are indicating the different directions thereby they are indicating the different directions i can also write in the vector suppose let me say if my a b is my here then i can write on this vector like this also on the top of this i will mark a vector symbol the magnitude of the vector indicates by either mod of ab or simple ab so this is the geometrical representation of vector this is we will do the algebraic uh, notation of vector the magnitude will shown by the mod of ab or ab we will mainly prefer this one because it saves our time or we to so the vector we will use the vector and on the top of this we will use the arrow so it is all about uh, the vector the difference between the vector quantities and the scalar quantities then what are the examples of vector and scalar quantities what are the criteria that has to be followed if a quantity is a vector quantity then what is the representation of vector graphically and algebraically we will see in the next class how to add the vectors how to subtract the vectors geometrically as well as based upon the algebra thank you we will see in the next class